Today we have the story of uh, Leonardo's Horse, written by Jane Fritz and illustrated by Hudson Talbot. This story, the kind and the general of this story, is a biography. What does it mean, biography? Biography, it means it's a story that is written about a famous person or a great person who made a, a lot of achievement or something great in life, but it's not written by himself, no. Other people write it about this person. Like, for example, if you have the biography of um, Muhammad Ali Klai, the biography of Prophet Muhammad, the biography of Leonardo da Vinci, or uh, the biography of um, Albert Einstein, all of these biographies was written about those great people, but it was written by another people. So we call it biography. Now, the story starts with the, the young Leonardo. Leonardo was a person who uh, who was raised in a small, small city in Italy. Now, since he was a young man, he was different from other boys and other young men. He used to wear different uh, colors of clothes. He used to wear uh, rose and velvet colors of, of the clothes, which is different from that type that the men used to wear at that time. And he used to wander all around the place, all around the village, just wondering how this is made and how this is made. And he was thinking about the universe, about the nature, about everything. So all the people who saw Leonardo at that age, they knew that this person is special and he has special talent. And one day he, w he might be what? An artist. Always wondering about himself and say, if you don't make something that is so unique and something is new to the world, then what's the benefit of your existence? If you just are copying everything the people done before, so, so there's no reason of your existence. You have to be unique. You have to be a special person. You have to think out of the box. You have to bring something new. So that's why if you come and, and if you go get Leonardo da Vinci and see his works, you can see that his works are, and his, his drawing and his painting is so weird sometimes. And a lot of them, it has some a lot of devices and a lot of, uh, of machines that it wasn't at that time. So he had imagination and he has thinking beyond his level and beyond the time that he was born in. Now, one of the things that he done in his life was making a horse for the Duke of Milan. He wanted to make a sculpture out of, uh, of uh, bronze. And he now Leonardo accepted the job. When he go there, he draw the horse and he wanted to, to make him. But the king said for him, I don't want you to make a small horse. I want it to be a big, big, big horse. Okay? And I want it to be made of a bronze. So Leonardo, to make that horse, he went and spent a lot of time near of the stables, watching the horses, how they move, how they act, how they eat, what are the muscles of the, of the horses, what are the organs, and how the legs are moving, how the hair is moving, everything, every little detail. One day, he collected all the metal that he could to have from melon, just to make that horse. But before to make it out of metal and bronze, he started to make it out of mud. Okay? So he made a big sculpture of horse made of mud, not a bronze. And he showed it for the king and for the crowds of people near of the king's palace. All the people were amazed. Wow! What kind of horse, big horse is this? This is amazing. But at that time, young Leonardo didn't put the bronze immediately. He wasn't sure how to put it on that horse and should he pour it at once or should he put a step by step or organ by organ. He didn't know because the size of that thing, it was so big also. So Leonardo didn't figure out how to make it. So he was thinking about it, thinking about it, didn't know how to make it until one day, in 1999 now imagine he made this horse at 1493 okay he didn't made anything extra for that uh, for that sculpture until the day of 19, 1499 which means after six years after six years of that horse staying in front of the palace of, of the duke's uh, of the in front of the palace of the duke the French, they came for Italy and wanted to invade Italy. Now the king, he wanted to make arrows, he wanted to make swords for his army. And he, now the dream of Leonardo has to be stopped. Why? Because now it's a time of war and he can't do anything for the horse. 
And now the French, when they came and they saw that horse, they said, Oh, you think that you are greater than us because you put uh, a large horse like this in front of us? No, you aren't. And they pointed their arrows to that horse and they target that horse with their arrows. The next day there was what a heavy rain came from the sky and washed this horse to the ground and to make it a pile of mud and soil and that's it. Not what makes it even more depressing for uh, Leonardo is some other artists like the famous artist like Michelangelo. When he grew up he said for Leonardo, listen you couldn't complete that horse while you have the best chance ever. Now you should live in shame for all of your life. And that's why when Leonardo also wanted to die, before he died, he was always thinking about that horse and he thought to himself that he didn't make anything great in this life or any achievement. However, the irony of that destiny is when Leonardo died, after him with a long, long time, there came a person, his name is Charles Dent, who liked the, the work of uh, Leonardo da Vinci. And he knew from the history about the, the horse that Leonardo wanted to make. And he brought one of the artists, her name is Mina, who completed that horse and she made it as a reality, as a real, real horse. And she made it uh, in front of and she put it where she put it even in Italy in Milan. And she showed it for all the crowds of people. She showed it for all people to see it. After how much years, maybe like 500 years or something, they made it on 1999. Imagine, more than 600 or 500 years they put that horse. And the dream of Leonardo became reality and became real, but not in his time, but after 500 years of his time. What we learn from this story, hmm, what do you think? What we learn from this story, that even if you are trying to make something unique and something special, it's not necessary that you can see it in your life. Sometimes you can die before that thing. But that doesn't mean that you are not great and you are not special and you are not unique. No. You have to work and you have to do everything that you can. You have to do all your efforts to be a unique person and special person, even if you can't see it with your own eyes. However, the other generations and the next generations can see it coming and can see your achievements even after you die. Thank you so much for watching and if you have any uh, question, please post, please uh, state it below so I can help you with it. Don't forget to subscribe and like and thank you so much.